What sound of noise do you hate? Um, when you, you know, when you uh, inadvertently, this is coming from. There's no uh, malevolence here. When you step on an animal, like when you step on a cat or something, oh, or a dog. I just forgot that I asked that, and not which one do you love. So I added that to that. Oh, sorry. That's what I thought. It's my answer for both. <laughs> No, so when I, you step, yeah, dude, I know. When like pickles my little oh. ten pound cavapoo, if like she gets in the way and you no, step on the you paw, don't mean to. that noise is and you can't say sorry. They don't know sorry. They don't. I don't know. I've gotten her pretty fucking high, and she understands a lot. <laughs> they don't understand. <laughs> I've grabbed a lot of pussy unintentionally, and they never do sorry. Probably because I never said it. Hey, it's Herbert, mm-hmm. and you're listening to the About Last Night podcast. How do you feel about hotels in general? So, um, I feel like I've been to hotels where it's just it's I'm I'm like living Julia Roberts from Pretty Woman. That's always fun. In all these hotels where they they're like I'm not there that I'm I shouldn't be there that yeah. I'm a vagrant who's trying to get uh, money from people in the lobby. They don't make you feel welcome. No, and they're always looking at you. Like, well, how do you look you? when you walk into a hotel lobby? Unfortunately, like this. <laughs> With that smile, like an like, like an extra from the Warriors, <laughs> I'm like, can I can I play? Yeah, I'm in a two room two away. No, I think it depends on. There the- is a hotel like, just the way anyone judges and you get uh, give off first impressions. I mean, the way that you assess the smell of the lobby, they're looking at you. Even though I feel like all hotel lobby clerks always are heads down because it's almost like a power move. Like they don't want to greet you. I've been rarely greeted. It's always like this. Like, come into the hotel. I'll be the hotel person. Ready? <laughs> Hi. Uh, I have a reservation here at United Airlines Hotel. Oh. One second. I'm sorry. Are you, um, are, are you maestroing right now? <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> Um, Hello, can I help you? Yeah, I left my credit card here last night. I don't know if I'm not even staying here. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's that level of no yeah, thanks. I don't want to help by you. By the way, brother, <laughs> they have the poker faces of like, by the way, there's always like a hundred of them behind. Yeah. And they all have something else to do. Yeah. I'm always like, can you ask that guy? And they're like, he's busy. He they're doesn't like, work here. He's just standing there. He's looking at you and looking at me. He's not on the shift. Eating then what is he doing back there? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I used to, when I worked at Albertsons and I would uh, be working late and there'd be one bagger, one night manager and one uh, cashier. Oh. And so at one point, the one cashier is taking his 15 minute break. 15 minute break on a fucking what 12 hour shift so the manager would come check and then i would go back and there was a long line one night and they uh all rushed over to the the one line and my buddy bart who's a cashier was in the corner talking to his girlfriend and some woman rushes over and just goes um hey you want to go open up a second lane we're all just standing here waiting i'd like to get my toaster strudels and lube home to my son and you're like uh Both those things are for your son <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma'am, I have a He's quick a question. growing boy and he's horny. <laughs> Hungry he's and fuck horny. these strudels. <laughs> and so she goes. And they, they're, they're hard to get in when they're toasted. <laughs> so he's standing Lube in the corner. Strudels. <laughs> Lube strudels. So she goes, hey, uh, Money on the table. Can, you get, can you get off the phone and come, uh, come can open you up a second? Get line? off the phone so my son can go get off at home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. But the, the, the audacity of yeah. people. And I stepped in. I go, maybe you shouldn't shop so late. And my buddy goes, hey, dude. And she goes, who the fuck are you? And I was like, and I cover my name tag. I was like, my name's Eli. I don't work here. Yeah. I'm What's in this with the apron? <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy, get off the phone. Yeah. yeah. You just everyone pile on him. 
<laughs> he turns and everyone's yelling into his mouth. Oh, yeah. He was a classic, a good dude. We had so many characters at the grocery store. Did you... Did, what well, was the, the same thing with restaurants? Because I was a server forever. That was my question. When you, when you're, uh, um, like, they close everybody's section. It's just you and like yeah. one other guy. Yeah. And people, they, there's no sort of like, yeah, just assess the situation. Yeah. There's two people running what is usually like a twenty person operation. Yes. By the way, you're in a cheesecake factory <laughs> at eleven twenty nine. <laughs> On a Tuesday, uh, complaining about the amount of uh, tequila in your ultimate margarita. <laughs> it's like, the guy's like, come on. I'm like, dude, you, you're just harassing everyone. Just for the sake of it. Yeah, it's like your family's just happy you're here and not there. Is there a full staff on a Tuesday at the factory? No. 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 What shift? Who are you getting? Oh. Like, is that like the is that the equivalent of the 4 p.m. Sunday afternoon strip club? At the club? strip club? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the 6 a.m. on a phone sex operator? <laughs> Oh, God. <sighs> it's also an Indian call center. <laughs> you're not sure what part you're servicing at that moment. But it's like... How many boobs do you have? Well, I just wanted to do I... it. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many boobs do you have? I, I, I thought this was uh, for uh, uh, Hewlett Packard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. Hewlett Packard yeah, in there. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, you can call me that if you want while I come. I once prank That's called... That's her son. <laughs> You like toasty strudel? What flavor? I went spring Berry? Because I'm Berry. Okay, Oh, sir. God. I knew a kid named Bill Berry in my- Bill uh, Berry? In my elementary school. Guess, based on that name, if he was a, a tiny man or a large man. Bill Berry. Was it spelled like a well, berry? Well, say, say it again and- then Bill Berry? Try to say it without saying it like <laughs> fucking Dumbledog. What's yeah. his name? Dumbledore? No. Or, uh, no, uh, Ian McKellen? No. The fucking dog. The Oh, but, Droopy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Dumble dog. I don't know. That's when the dogs were the wizards in Harry Potter. <laughs> we're pitching that. We're like, you know Harry Potter, right? What if they were dogs? It's a calendar. Dumble. Yeah. But you mean? Yeah. It's Bill but, Barry. Bill Barry. Yeah. See, that's a huge man. Yeah. Big guy. Big guy. I, I think he's. I think he's dropped some lbs over the uh, last twenty years. But, um, but that guy. Wait, what did the? Uh, was it William? William. William Barry. William Barry. Bill Why ba didn't he go away? Because Bill Barry's. Fun, Did he go dude. by BB? He went by Bill Barry because that was a fun name to say. And he was, he was. I mean, dude, let me pull up. I think he's on YouTube actually. I think he's made some videos. Uh, he's he's um, what in the suburb community refers to as a um, what's the term for uh, when a white kid thinks they're black? You know what I'm saying? Uh, do you have a sound effect for cancel stand? <laughs> We're just stamp just like comes out over our face and goes, You've been canceled. Oh, I typed in Bill Barry. Here's the real Bill Barry. Bill Barry. Husband Beetle Geek. That's not that can't be him, is it? Wait, does he list that? That's like his business card. <laughs> I'm Bill Barry. Let me tell you something about me. Okay, my husband, number one. I got a lady at home who I keep warm. And I'm a Beetle Geek. <laughs> the band? No, the life form. The band? What's the band? <laughs> I love Beatles. <laughs> Have you seen the Beatles doc? No. Yeah, me neither. Have you watched anything in the last oh, month that you've everything. been real excited about? Oh, really? I, You're on a tear right now. I uh, I just watched Spider-Man. And? Yeah. God, why? It's, I've heard it's just... You know what it is? I haven't seen um, one bad review. No, and I'll tell you why. Because, and I'm not spoiling anything, but uh, there is a way that they have... It, it, the, it, Marvel has done such a good job of topping themselves yeah. in every movie. Yeah. And the good, and you know why people go like, you know how there's every guy at a bar is like, I could do that. Yeah. Like when a guy misses a shot. Yeah. They get paid the bucks because they are figuring out how to top their own genius. And this movie does it in a way where it feels really down to earth and really grounded. Whereas like Endgame and sort of Infinity War just felt like it was, you know, it was literally spanning across time and space. Right. Whereas this happens here in New York. And somehow it almost feels bigger and more personal. Wow. Yeah. And and Tom... Uh... Tom Holland is unbelievable. Every now and then I think that somebody of that age, you go, that is a movie star. You just can't teach Undeniable. that. Whatever he's or she is doing, mm -hmm. but it's like that guy is carrying... The movie's like two and a half hours long. And he, we forget, this is the third one of these he's carried. And it's the second biggest opening of all time. Holy shit. And in COVID. Could you imagine what the numbers would have been like? 
Oh, man. Isn't that insane? And not COVID, yeah. Um, That's a different, in the multiverse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the other multiverse, this thing was Yeah, what's that going on? Somebody just posted some stuff about NFT something, and then they, something about multiverse. Like, what is that? I don't know. I just know that multiverse is like infinite universes of our existence, <sighs> and NFTs are something that I don't quite understand. How, does your brain go, first of all, what did Tom, Hank th- Tom Hanks think of Spider-Man? Oh, <laughs> I gave it two webs up. <laughs> Tom, that's not how webs work. Well, I um, well, cobwebs are up there. I can't get them. Is that what spider? Is that the plot of Spider Man? Well, I'm just trying to. That's what the bad guys say. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I audition <laughs> to play the part of uh, of of Doc Ock, and I. Whoa, okay. Well, well, who? Of Doc Ock. <laughs> you Doctor gotta Oc- space Octopus. it out. <laughs> Doctor Octopus. <laughs> Sound like you're saying Doc Cock. Doc Ock. <laughs> in the in the Spider Man web shooter porno. <laughs> Doc got- Ock, I've got eight legs, and they're crazy. It's also a Hanukkah tie-in. <laughs> eight crazy legs with Doc Ock. And my tagline was, I'll get you, spider in the corner. <laughs> Their dolls are going out. Wait, wait you pull the string. Oh, Tom, thanks for that review, man. Um, Your web's up. <laughs> thanks. They're, out. They're searching. <laughs> By the way. Can Hanks just at some point pivot into a YouTube movie review show? Like, at what point do you go, I've done it all, man. man Why don't I just have fun? That's such a good question. Just have, like, at what point do you truly look in the mirror and go, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Like, look what Will Smith is doing. When he got on Instagram, started, and then just fucking around, yeah. but saw how many people immediately were like, I'll watch everything and anything you do, dude. You could just do a thing. You could He could literally do a mukbang video where he's trying out foods, and people would watch it. Oh, dude. And they decided to take it up a notch, bungee jump at the Grand Canyon. Now he's got this whole, you know. Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Dude, he's doing everything. Yeah. Why don't. S- Snoop Dogg is living the multiverse. Yeah. Like, he's successful. He just was the guest star when they did the live in front of a studio audience. Oh, yeah, know? I saw that. Dude, he was awesome. Yeah. I mean, this guy's just appearing Doesn't say no. everywhere. Making himself a veil for everything. But Hank's like, what's your... Doesn't say no. That was his attitude towards drugs. Yeah. <laughs> and Instead of just say no. Doesn't say no, and now other jobs. Snoop was the guy that can get the D.A.R.E. officer, like, midway through his speech, like, walk in, convince him that drugs are actually pretty cool. Yeah. Then get the D.A.R.E. officer high, and then they just bail on the kids. He, bro, he is McGruff the crime dog. Wow. Dude, now... What's under that coat? Drugs. <laughs> Take a bite out of crime. Remember that Get guy? Get out of this pot brownie. <laughs> <laughs> Take out a, b- a bite out of edibles. I'll see you tomorrow, kid. Where are you going? <laughs> you are on a trip to Funland. Oh, man. Man, those are some weird outtakes. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you remember the Care Bears had to fight drugs? Do no. you remember those old Care Bears movies? No. Dude. I mean, vaguely, but not that they were fighting drugs. I thought me it was neither. just. No, no, they were fighting drugs. The kids were getting, uh, they were on drugs, and they came to save the kids. Could you, the cartoons that they made. Yeah, isn't that crazy? The kids in the Care Bear movies were getting fucked up. Yeah. So they 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 called in the Care Bears to get them to just, what, see the light and kind of go back home and- Stare at my chest. Sober up. (laughs) Stare at my belly. (laughs) I mean, yeah, dude. Did you have a favorite bear? Uh, I liked uh, the Luck Bear, the green one. Lux a lot or something. Or no, uh- the green one, I don't know. That was the one who had the best pot. Greeny. Yeah. Gr- <laughs> they, those were all, here's the crazy thing. <clears throat> they were all drugs. They were. They all resembled a different, like, emotion Could you, you imagine felt. someone's like, I got off drugs. How? These these little bears helped me. They're like, still, <laughs> buddy, you're still on them. <laughs> I used to do it. Just a- got to the kid in a padded white cell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you never got these little off bears them. just, like, I stared at their chest. There they shot no a bears! light into my eyes. Yeah. Dude, this guy shot a rainbow in my face. Oh, my His God. His name was Teddy. That wasn't a guy. Was a bear. <laughs> no, it was a guy. Oh, it was a guy. <laughs> Dressed as a bear. Hey, he just, he was flashing him. <laughs> hey, look at my rainbow. Oh, yeah, that story. Whoa. Imagine you get to jail. What are you in for? Uh, these uh, little bears just shot rainbows in my face. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You're the weird guy in jail for just describing the plot of Care Bears. Dude, you guys remember Care Bears? By the way, and then those guys in jail get out, and they, like, see Care Bears, and they go, and they have this moment where they go to the window, and they look out and go, he wasn't that crazy after all. And, and then look, Dad? He, sorry, sorry, I was thinking about chair. my prison days. You said you were at IHOP for a while. Uh. 
<laughs> but it just cuts to the guy who's like, I'm not crazy in the chair. And they're all being like, hey, man, he wasn't that crazy. Uh, we should call him sometime. What was his name? Teddy? <laughs> Swar- the flickering of the lights. Swartzen used to have this great joke about uh, meeting, uh, or being at a uh, an NFL benefit, I think, with Aaron Rodgers, and meet some woman, and she's like, hi, Aaron Rodgers, nice to meet you. And Swartzen then, she goes, and who are you? And he's like, oh, I also play for the team. I'm wide receiver, like, you know, Nick Youssef. And she goes, oh, my goodness, I have I know who you are. Aaron, you throw him the ball. You throw him the ball on Sunday. And Nick's like, I'm just in the NFL all of a sudden. Like, I just lying to this old lady. He goes, what is he doing here? Yeah. He made a promise. Yeah. <laughs> and then he goes, how bad? He goes, he goes, you know that woman went home and goes, so at the – um." At the benefit tonight, I met Aaron Reg- Aaron Rodgers, and oh, I don't know, wide receiver Nick Youssef. And they go, Grandma, there's no wide receiver named Nick Youssef. <laughs> yes, he was. I met him tonight with Aaron Rodgers. He's going to throw him the ball. Grandma, there's no receiver. All right, we got to put her in a home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, and she starts losing it. But that's like the plot of Air Bud, and not like really, but those those types of movies. Which one? Where they're just like, listen, we we got to put this dog in the game now. Dude, like I mean, they just say it and then it suddenly happens without well, rhyme or reason. Do you what if you're in the room or or with the, the friend that comes up with that and you're out here, that truly should be to anyone out there trying to, I don't know, get anything made, that anything's possible. There are fifty two Airbud movies. Holy shit. Airbud. Then in, a year later, Airbud Golden Receiver. Yeah. Yep. And then Airbud three came out two years later. I mean, fucking, what is it called? Air Bud. Uh, is it Air Buddies? World, World Spy, World Pup. And yeah. then. And I then... came up with an idea called CIA Ape, where this monkey was James Bond. Oh, that's a great But idea. nobody realized it. Only the audience was in on it, where it was like a chimpanzee in a tuxedo with a gun. Oh, my God. CIA Does he talk? Ape. Not you know that they you know they put peanut butter in the chimps' mouths so to get them to do that and then they would just add sound over it. Is that animal cruelty? Uh, I think that they love it, peanut butter. It was yeah. It, I feel like it was uh, the only time they fed him good shit. <laughs> it's like that's a crazy little film then trick. They do, you know. Oh, so then they animate around that. Then they go like, hey, drop. You know, hey, Doctor No. Yeah. What? Wait, is that how they did it for um, Planet of the Apes? No, I guess that was those CGI. were rubber masks. Oh okay. yeah, <laughs> those were people. Planet of the Apes was made with people. Oh man, the first one I saw it was so baked, and the, the and it was so. Wait, which one? The one from seven from sixty seven? No, the one um, with Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, no, uh, no, the one, uh, the one that was very funny, the one with uh, James Franco. James Franco, and it was Andy dead circus. Yeah, de- de- amazing, dead silent in the theater, incredible, uh, brilliant, the dead silent in the theater, and remember the first time one of the chimps speaks. I think they were about to t- attack James Franco. He goes, no! Dude, I burst out laughing so hard unexpectedly. It was, was like, like six a, monkeys and the t- they just turned to you and you're like... It was a really weird, like, guttural reaction. I just like... It was so it. funny to me. And it was like... And the theater was like so silent. It was like the wrong time to laugh. It was one of those things where like I laughed, so then like twenty people laughed because I also went like... <laughs> like it was just like the most obnoxious stoner laugh, but it just... It was so funny out of nowhere. Does that ever happen to you? What what type of shit like that makes you laugh that when you don't expect so it? So I I went to go see Royal. I'll never forget this Royal Tenenbaums. Great movie. When he when Luke Wilson he's committing suicide. Mm. It's so dark. It wasn't that I thought it was funny, but my buddy and I in a packed theater in New York when that came out, like Rushmore had come out before that, and yeah. um and so this was maybe I think this was like the follow up right soon after, maybe a year or so after, and we just started laughing, and like we weren't we weren't high. Your Honor. So we had like no defense, you know? Just we're enjoying it. Dude, we were just enjoying it. And there was something like darkly, just there was so much dark humor in that whole movie. Mm. And I feel like my buddy and I, and maybe other people were getting it, they just weren't being audible about it. Right. Where we were, we were laughing out loud. And I remember when we laughed out loud at that point, I mean, every eye turned. You know, in Inception, when they know that you're in the guy's brain, yeah. whatever, and they all kind of go, mm. yeah, yeah. Everyone gives us the stink eye. <laughs> The side eye, yeah, yeah. But you know what's crazy about, uh, like, uh, I always think about we we just had to go through. If I'm like, did you see Planet? I mean, you're like, I saw Planet of the Apes. I'm like, the one from '67. They're like, no, no, the one from '68. No, 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 the other one. Oh, the one with Mark Wahlberg, not that one. The one with James Frank. It's like we cannot stop making. It'll never stop. No. They remade Home Alone with a British kid. They're going to remake Goonies. Yeah, I mean, because they make money. Yeah. But don't you wish? It's reintroducing it to a new audience. I get that. Instead of being like. Look what already happened. It's why, it's why, uh, it's why people cheat. I guess, right? It's why people go, "Hey, meet this newer, cool version." 
yeah. of, the, of your mom. And you go, what happened to mom? Uh, this one is better. It's Every, a British guy. Everybody. <laughs> hey, you remember the movie Jojo Rabbit? Yeah. Well, now I'm dating him. This is your mom now. <laughs> and, and, and you uh, two are going to spend Home Alone. <laughs> that movie, by the way, just came on. That's a movie that I can watch. The original? Yeah, any moment. Dude, it shot in Illinois right where I grew up. No way. I, I grew up in Skokie, Illinois, and Shermer, Illinois. They shot in all of those high schools and area around where I grew up. Holy shit. So like the gym from Breakfast Club or Ferris Bueller's Day Off or Pretty in No Pink, way. All, so like we- when Why we, did they get tapped for the hot spot to shoot? John Hughes, that's where he, and he shot Home Alone. So like in the 80s up until then, I don't remember what he made after, to be honest with you, like Home Alone or Home Alone 2. Yeah. But, um, uh, that one, full disclosure, Reddit users was shot in New York, um, but the, but the rest of it. Shot in New York, right outside of my hotel. Right out there. So such a great, such a great. Believe me, okay. Believe me. It's... I was up for the role of Kevin McAllister, but I thought to myself, you know, my penis is too big. Kevin also is, uh, you know, he's not a womanizer like I am. You know what? I turned it down. A lot of people don't know this, okay? Believe me, okay? I turned it down. I said, who'd, who'd leave me home alone? I'd never be home alone. <laughs> I have so much gold to keep me company, okay? And Melania, she never leaves. I chained her to the bed. I never I'm leave. Never quite. I cannot leave. I won't let her leave. I cannot leave. I will not leave. I won't let her I leave. I want to leave. And Eric, I have Eric. He never leaves. He please, has a doggy door right there. Please help me. Help her, help please. her, help her come, help us all. No, please help me, though. Help us. No, I'm like tired. hamburger helper. I never had it, but I like the ham. I wish I could taste that That ham talks the way that I do. I said, what are we getting for dinner? He goes, hamburger helper. I go, I like this guy. I haven't had water in days. She's got, I listen, she has all sport. I feed her all sport. That's not water. That's a. I feed her the purple all sport. It sh- matches <laughs> That's the a colored dress. water drink. It's water, yes. I don't think you can base, say colored water in 2021. It's a purple okay? grape. It's... <laughs> I, I believe I believe all sport. It's please, a great company. Please. Drops all sport. Drops all sport. I'll do anything for all sport. I'll, I'll suck everyone at all sport to be free. Melania is also part Indian. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, how is Donald Trump's like, you know what they uh, should call the orange Gatorade Trump aid? Oh, okay? yeah. You know what? It's what women put in their mouth when they want to be th- when they quench their oh thirst my for God. gold. <laughs> Why hasn't he come out with a fucking energy drink? Because he's a fucking moron. I'm saying it on this podcast. <laughs> it's never been said before, but <laughs> hot take, hot take, canceled. I mean, if the <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything guy he, who gets canceled, if there's anything, let he, me just say this about the Jew <laughs> yeah. cut canceled. Oh, well, dude, that's what I love about baseball commentators nowadays, bro. It's just like, yo, you're talking for too long. Yeah. You're trying to fill the you're trying to fill the airwaves for coming up on three to four hours with anecdotes and stories that nobody cares about. In the three hundred game season. Like, you know, uh two and one on uh on Gomez. You know, you know, I uh when I was like it's a great day at a ballpark, great day to flag kite. When I was ten, I and everyone was just like, Shut the fuck up. Nobody cares about your stupid kite story. And so I do. Well, you, the John. I if, thought he was talking about one of the family. If it's a John Kite yeah. story, hey, let me see where he's going with this. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not shut this guy off. Too Hilarious. Fast. Nobody cares about your kite story. You took that personal. All right. But then there is there is a moment where every commentator just they run out of steam, and they're just like their their brain shuts down and they're on autopilot, oh, and that's when they're just like, yeah, full count on uh, Roberts. You know, I saw this fat black Jew last night, and you're like, yeah, and the guy's like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, what? Is the counts? Three and two, there's two balls. Fat black Jews have two balls. They go, you're making it worse. <laughs> there's two flat black, <laughs> flat black Jews. You know what, though, is Harry. So I grew up with Harry Carey, bro. I oh, yeah. Not only did I work, He never said anything wrong. And guess what? If he are did. Are you kidding me? Oh, really? He would go. There was one time. So two different times. I'll never forget it. I was watching the NBA draft, actually, and on uh, a TV. This is why I remember it, because we kept flipping back and forth to the Cubs score. Mm. And this is, like, literally pre-internet, so we couldn't just look it up on our phones or whatever. Kids, there was, you know, phones used to have Good. cords. I mean, you joke, but they have no fucking, fucking idea, idea dude. And I'm really angry about getting old. Just so, Snapchat your fucking wiener to, to your mom's friends, Caleb. That's your real name. Go spelled ahead. with three Ks. <laughs> Canceled, Caleb. <laughs> With three Ks, so so um, what, so we're going back and forth to the draft. I'm not kidding you, Steve Stone, who was the other guy that worked with him, he um, he's telling him what's happening, 
He's like, Harry, he goes, uh, he goes, uh, I think he's at it first. And then Harry's like, I don't know what's going on down there. And it's like, they're all watching it. There's nothing happening in the game. The Wait, game is paused. He's saying, I don't know what's going on. Like, like, he, goes, he, goes, like he doesn't understand the call or he truly is just like, We're, you're not sure. And then it keeps going where he goes, well, I'll tell you. And then Steve Stone is always like explaining it to him. Like, um, he's so like, that he can just like, just, so we can just move forward. So that you don't have to, because it's like he's like what I think you, you're not understanding is Harry. If I might step, you know, step in on this, you know, dementia, is that <laughs> is that uh, that he, well, he was being very polite. He was just like, you know, he's he's out at first, and he goes, he goes, well, what? He goes, Steve, I just I don't understand what's going on. And then oh, about like you can't just call a guy out when he's thirty seconds to the in, bag goes, before the other guy. He goes, bag? What are we talking about bags now? And they're like, what? No, no, he just oh, no, 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 okay. like, no. <laughs> paper or plastic? Yeah, 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 he he goes, like, rock, oh. oh. He goes. He goes. He literally goes. He goes. I think he's out. He like came to it on his own. But the but what he used to say is, "There's a guy, and I I I promise you, no disrespect to this man. I don't remember his name exactly, but the guy's going back. The hits it. Uh, they the guy on the other team hits a uh, uh, a fly ball in the outfield. This guy who's Hispanic, who is for um, uh, the Cubs, he he loses the ball." Mm. And then, uh, and Harry Carey goes, wow, how does a Mexican lose the ball in the sun? No, 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 he didn't. That's a famous quote. On air? Yeah. Is it out there to find? I'm sure it is. Yeah. Look up, uh, you just look up race, just look up Harry Carey racism. Oh God, dude, what a bummer. Was that like, was that a rap? Was that his last game? No, what? Oh, they kept him on the air after that. Brother. Yeah, they kept him. He could do no wrong. He's on ice right now with Walt Disney. Hilarious. We're never killing this guy. No, he could do no wrong. I in mean, in the eyes and hearts of fans, right? Harry Carey, I think, got to a level, and this is like. Do you know what I thought you just said? What? I thought you were going to talk about Jews. And you go in Eisenhart's fans. I'm like, who's Eisenhart? <laughs> <laughs> His Jewish commentator. <laughs> Listen, Harry, let me tell you something. <laughs> this guy is out at first. <laughs> Let's go to our sponsor, Hebrew National. <laughs> Hebrew National. Where the F is my Hebrew National? <laughs> Just never has enough fucking hot dogs. Dude, yeah, uh, Harry Carey, that's a guy, too, where you go, man, push the envelope. You know that you are in the Hall of Fame. You know. He's you're, untouchable. And when you got a little of that dementia, can you be aware with dementia? Can you know that you got dementia and, like, roll the dementia. dice and be like, it was the dementia. Sorry. Well, that's the biggest con of all. Cut to him on an island right now listening to this podcast. <laughs> and he goes, and then he just looks at the camera and goes, but how does a Mexican lose the ball in the sun? <laughs> Credits. <laughs> Canceled. Oh. Um, no, but th- but here's the thing. Back then, if you listen to all the stuff that, that was said before, like we now we're scrutinizing, which is sort of back to what I was talking about with the um with the uh the the uh the care bear stuff. Mm. We we are uh, we are predisposed to be uh, triggered by things, yeah. to be like, this is bad. I don't need to know where it's going. Yeah. And so, but if you go back, there was just, there was so much, if you just go back and comb through history and pop culture and sports and all this stuff, I mean, it was insane what is tolerated even like five years ago. But think about, this was the 90s right. to, to now. right. Like you gotta make I, there's no there's no actual kids shows about drugs that are like meant for children. That wasn't that was like a it was like a say no to drugs right. campaign. Right. But the kid was on the child they showed a kid on drugs. He was like getting probably really on drugs. Yeah, I hope so. They were feeding the kids real method. Yeah, he was meth. Can you imagine a kid comes in and they're just like, all right, so we're gonna give you this fake cigarette. He goes, get that shit out of my fucking face. <laughs> yeah, he's like, what is this Disney? I want to get high, baby. You know this ain't airing on on anything but cable. <laughs> they're like, all right, man, how, how'd your voice get deeper in the last hour? Because I'm 40, baby. Exactly. What? I got, I got progeria. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> That's the when they look super old. He goes, I've I'm, always I'm, wondered what that is. I look 40. How old are you? I'm six. <laughs> He's like Baby Herman <laughs> from Roger Rabbit. I got progeria. Let's do this, toots. <laughs> I got progeria. And a thirst for your wife. You go. What? Like, you know what he's doing there with that the NC is the CSI, the David. Oh, uh, yeah. like, I get progeria. <laughs> and a thirst for your wife. By the way, I had a thirst. Drum power aid. Never <laughs> thirst for your wife. Drum power aid. Okay. Gonna, I was gonna say one of the creepiest slash worst ways to tell someone that you got the hots for someone. I got a thirst for your wife. <laughs> Ah, hey man, I was gonna let you fuck her because of the whole progeria thing, but <laughs> <laughs> that was his make a wish. <laughs> 
I just want to fuck your wife, man. <laughs> Can hey, you, come on, make a wish. How many make a wish kids got pajeria? We'll be uh, right back. <laughs> oh, we'll keep it right here. It's like it's like uh, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a tits about the world may never know. Can you imagine if that owl's up in the tree? Lick- Wait, if that owl's up in the tree and goes <laughs> and he goes, he goes, how many licks does it take to get to the center? And the kid does it. He goes, and then he thinks it again. He goes, you ain't. Wait, he licks the kid's thing and then takes a bite and goes, three. And then the kid's like, the fuck, owl? That you kid asked had me. <laughs> you asked me. And <laughs> And then you ate my sucker, and then you all goes, wait, 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 okay, riddle me this. How many Make-A-Wish kids have progeria? <laughs> and then he takes out a kid with progeria and goes, well, hun, I'm going to go decapitate this kid? He goes, are we still twi- rolling on goes, this cartoon? He goes, ow, man, I'm 50. He goes, well, you look seven. <laughs> Don't lick me. <laughs> That <laughs> cut to the news. Uh, Mr. Owl is wanted for <laughs> murdering. Dude, there's a VH1 where they now like TV cartoon spokesman that I would love to make. Absolutely. And that owl was one of them. That owl was fucking p- Crime Dog McGruff, the owl. Dude, um, that would be where are they now cartoon characters? That would Scooby-Doo. be so funny. Yeah, dude. How do you get that out there? God, you know. Maybe sh- some of them have been canceled. I mean, some are like, it's a true like. Or what do they do You now? don't even have to do the real voices. Like. You get, even get Shaggy. Maybe he's opened a bakery somewhere, and he's like, hey, last time I saw Scoob was... I don't rock to him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just the last him. time I saw him was in a Hollywood video. He, he was, was in the, the XXXX section, man. Shaggy was working there. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I showed him where the good stuff was. I, I showed him where, where the... Where the... <laughs> Where the Scooby Snacks were. <laughs> it was ecstasy. <laughs> Man. Who was your favorite cartoon character growing up? Oh, dude. We've uh, talked about a lot. Care Bears obviously influenced you. Bro. I, Comedically, though. I open zip, uh, unzip. There's a, there's a fucking rainbow. I'd ask you to leave. What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My favorite bear was Pajaria. Hey, you just ring a bell? You're the little kid all grown up, and I'm the guy. Oh, I'm God. the bear. Oh, God. That's what our friendship's been about <laughs> for 16 years. <laughs> hey, remember me from the drug special? I Dude, finally got out of prison. There's another Where Are They Now? Where Are They Now? The kids in the anti drug ads. Or the Care Bears. Wow. That's maybe the one you got to start Bro. with. Bro. Because you got like 15 of them, right? The Care Bear Stare. Wait, how many? Care- the boy, that that's one. what it was called. The Care Bear Stare. Care. You know what I loved the most was I loved He Man and I loved Thundercats. The Care Bear Stare. Here it is. The Care Bear Stare. Ready? Yeah. Thundercats was great. Who the fuck is that guy? This is a new show called Woke Care Bears. I mean... Yeah, they got to they got to recast that no, voice. No, that's by the way. I don't like I'm not sure. William Defoe. Watch, we find out that we all know those people. Yeah, probably. <laughs> no, yeah. but you're it's, it really is. It's like, let me tell you this, kids. I just just like, stare at my chest. <laughs> just stare at my well, chest. Well, here's the thing, it stands not out. Even a bear, that's just a, a regular bear. Every other voice is like, "Oh my goodness, we need to we need to get the the storm to stop to, to stop hovering." I'll tell you what we need. <laughs> Who what? We need money for crack. Who are you? <laughs> There's just a rock on his, a, like a dirty rock. I'm on Jerry. His. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry the what? Just Jerry. I'm Jerry Bear. <laughs> no, uh, there's a weed gum. One of them, one of them is now just a weed gummy bear. You just put me in your mouth, man. <laughs> you suck on me. I'm super- That's my nephew, Haribo. <laughs> Rebo. Oh yeah, dude. Thundercats. So I know you love Thundercats. Oh, loved them. There, there's, um, there's something about being, uh, being at the right age at the right time, dude. Like when we talk about TV shows, music, even sports stuff, like the fact that you got to grow up with Harry Carey and Michael Jordan in Chicago dude. is bonkers. You know, uh, everyone's got their equivalent. And if you weren't, in, what's interesting too is like the people that weren't into sports 
What do you think they nerd out on as far as growing up in Chicago at the right time? They probably recognize like, oh yeah, I got to see the height of MJ. You know but- what though? That's the craziest thing. I don't. I think that's how big MJ was. That even if you weren't into basketball, he was so everywhere. Yeah. With his shoes the way that they were, then the dream team, then those championships, the three, and then the other three. I mean, the '90s. It was like he had his own steakhouse. I feel like it, even if he obviously there are other guys like Chuck Taylor had shoes and mm. stuff like that, but he feels like a first in a global sense for yeah. so many different things. Do you ever see him just farting around Chicago at no. the mall or anything? No, never. Do you know people that did that had like MJ encounters. I know people who had MJ encounters and uh, they they were le- positive. They weren't positive. But here's the thing: yeah. as MJ as MJ's attorney, and uh, um, with uh, with uh, with w- w- listen, people meet you. Or or me or whoever I'm comparing us obviously to Michael Jordan yes. the three of us it's pretty much that you he and I yes that that you it's all perception right like people are tired you don't know when you meet somebody and so I try to not have even if I have like unless it's like an incredibly negative opinion about somebody or like yeah. an experience with somebody yeah I chalk it up to like not that you want to give people a second chance but you hope that people give you a second chance right that if you're like or or if they misread a situation you know like there's certain things in my mind that I go back and I think like oh. If I if I had seen it through that lens, like maybe he was just late for something and wasn't trying to blow somebody off, right? You know, yeah, like I, yeah, you got to at least. I mean, it's easy to be a dick if you're those guys, and also yeah, because nobody's recording it. Yeah, and you're a thousand percent. And as Jordan, you're probably like, man, I, I, I'm so nice. I just was nice to thirty kids in a row, and like maybe one kid catch them in the wrong moment, or yeah. like maybe Mike's got diarrhea, or like. You know, he just found out. He just lost. He, you know, gambled a lot. So maybe something. Maybe just got a some poor information about some horse. You know, and so now you got some kid with headgear coming up, being like, "Sign my, sign my bracelet." And he's like, "What?" Well, he goes, "What's your name, kid?" Stephen. Stephen was the name of the horse that I just lost two billion dollars on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, Michael Jordan punched me in the face. Sweet. That's better than signing. <laughs> he signed my face <laughs> with his fist. <laughs> the guy's coming to the- Wendy Williams? He pulled through. He was supposed to die. <laughs> that beating gave me the courage to keep living. Oh, God. <laughs> and now he has his own judge show after J- Judge Judy. Oh, man. Judge Steven. I read- <laughs> I'll beat the truth out of you. Bailiff, bring him over for a beat down. Hey, hey, please approach the bench. And then it's just him bench pressing. <laughs> Dude, that's Wait, the- just a kid with a lisp and headgear that if he doesn't like your he's argument. Up now. Halfway through, it's like you're basically trying to plead your case until he just goes. <laughs> While he's working out. <laughs> so he's just the total fuck you. He's like, I don't even care, man. Oh, yeah. She, yeah, she took your dog and didn't bring him back. Likely story. Approach the bench. <laughs> Approach the bench and spot me. Psych. Boom. <laughs> Knuckle sandwich. You just got Steven. <laughs> the Jerry rests, Your Honor. Psych. There's no Jerry. We can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> this show's got a weird budget. <laughs> Why are people Guys, bringing what? their dirty laundry to air out on this show with this, this the- kid judge who doesn't give a fuck? You spent all the money on another Bowflex? We have four of them on set. We don't need to fix You never Bowflex. know when you're getting an extra Bowflex. You've been Steven. You've been Steven. Listen, Bullflex needs to cut off their sponsorship. <laughs> Tell them they can suck my dick. Well, they're here. They're in court. Oh. They, thanks, thanks for your products. That approach the bench. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, who would do that? And every show when you've approached the bench, someone's getting the shit kicked out of them. Oh. Here, you, let me tell you what I like about, about, um, about uh, He-Man. Yeah. That, that, uh, that I, I, uh, did you audition for the, the reboot? I believe so for um uh um what was his name? Um the bad guy. Skeletor? Yes. That Mark Hamill <laughs> that Mark Hamill did? Yes. It was yeah. Dude, isn't that always And I knew I was like, this is not gonna this is gonna iconic characters go to iconic Bro, people. I just auditioned for the X Men, the new X Men. Oh great. Series. But and they wanted me you I love that though, but I'm like, if this dude is still alive, he's gonna do the part. It's like I mean, yeah. as you should, if you made it yeah. is good. By the way, like it's like when uh, 
like I remember way back in the day, they they wanted us to uh, audition for. I'm sure you did too for Futurama mm. when they were ho- having like a contract holdout. Right. And you're like, dude, we know what it's like. Like those are their characters. Yeah. I'm not trying to do those guys as characters. No. And it's like with that, they needed. I mean, did you, the cast is unbelievable for the new He Man. But I like oh, the really? original He Man because there was just something amazing in the 1980s about this show about dudes who just hung out in no clothes. Yeah, refresh my memory on the He-Man plot. Um, That's pretty much it? Uh, so this, it was in Eternia, and uh, no, that's it. Just a lot of homoeroticism. Wait, give me, <clears throat> give Castle me, Grayskull. <clears throat> give me He-Man, break down He-Man as Jeff Bridges. Well, um, you know, let me just, uh, it's a little bright in here, man. I, uh, I wish I'd brought some shades. All right, there's a place, uh, you know, man, called Eternia. And uh, there's a castle, man. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's called Castle Grayskull. And this guy, Adam, the same name as you, man. There's like two of you out there now, I guess. <laughs> and um, he goes in there and... Uh, he, you know, he t- takes this sword, similar to like, I guess, you know, what's the uh, the Merlin guy, King Arthur, man? And he like, you know, pulls it out and he says something like, you know, I've got the power, you know, <laughs> the power of Grayskull, man. And he turns into this guy. Here's the crazy thing, though, man. You know. It's already pretty crazy. When you, well, well it's about to get, you know, <laughs> it's about to get bananas. So, the guy just takes off his clothes, man, and now he has a sword, but it's the same guy. He doesn't have a mask on or nothing, and people are like, who's this guy? I'm like, I mean, come on, man. It's the guy, man. It's Adam. What do you mean, man? Who is the guy? You say this guy is He-Man? That's how people use pronouns now. That guy's a He-Man, man. And then... The craziest part about this whole thing that'll blow your noodle, he's fighting a skeleton, man, named what? Skeletor? (laughs) And he's got a human body, man. He wasn't a skeleton at all. And anyway, man, there's a cat and a little dude named Orko who's got a lot of magic. Is my white Russian coming? Oh, oh. Oh, man. Oh, man. Jeff Bridges explains your childhood. (laughs) Oh, dude. John, you just, I mean, I, a lot of, I'm thinking about a lot of things right now. And yeah, that's, dude, that's brilliant. The thing, Merv, they just named the man. Who are the bad guys? Well, that's, he's a beast. This is the, (laughs) this is the, it's like the pitch meeting was Jeff Bridges for these villains. (sighs) So, all right, what's the pitch, Jeff? Well, the, the, the bad guy's a beast, man. All right, so what's his name? Beast Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like he also came up with the Little Caesar <laughs> slogan. They go, pizza, pizza. <laughs> well, well, why just, why? I mean, just in case I don't hear it. <laughs> yeah, you you got to, sometimes it you got to repeat things, man. Tell them what we're selling. Hey, p- we got pizza. A pizza. <laughs> You know, it's based so on... So should the second one be, like, in all caps? Pizza. Well, I'll definitely have a, uh, an exclamation point, man. Here's the thing. It's like it takes place in, you know, Rome. And Rome is a big place, man. Yeah. And sometimes you can't hear people in the Colosseum. So you got to be like, pizza, pizza, <laughs> when you're going around like a hot dog vendor at uh, Wrigley Field, man. What, didn't you work as a uh, concession guy in the uh, 70s? Oh, yeah, man. I, uh, what did I, you sell? What was your hot item? Well, <laughs> I tried to sell a lot of stuff. Like, think of me as the early Etsy. <laughs> I was just going through that, uh, you know, the football stadiums being like, hey, man, I got a hat. <laughs> no, just one. Not for the sports teams that are here today. This is a Blue Jays hat. <laughs> I know we're in a football game. Do you just bring shit from home and yeah, sell it? man. I was a yard sale. I was a walking yard sale, man. So instead of licorice ropes and cotton candy, you sold. I had real rope. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I go, listen, I got a screwdriver set. Hey, hey, guy with the Italian ice, man. This is my row. 
I was a, uh, they used to call me uh, uh, Jeff Bridges, the walking flea market. <laughs> I thought Christopher Walken had a, uh, a fucking, uh, anyway. That, you're encroaching. <laughs> wow. I'm a walking flea market. <laughs> wow. Wait, did Christopher Walken ever come up with a walk-in closet? Oh, my God. <laughs> you open up and go, your shoes are in here. <laughs> It just talks to you and like helps you the walk in closet. Oh. Ow. What's wrong? <laughs> it's just like a cramp from laughing too hard. <laughs> well, it's like you open it up and it goes, Wow, what should we wear today? What is it? Spring? I recommend pastels. Pastels colors. Happy Easter. <laughs> walk in closet. Oh. Well, Oh, it, ooh, look to your left. <laughs> There's a shoe carousel. Just say stop on the platforms you want. Walk in closet, dude. Oh, my God. Dude, that is so you good. It. You got to do that on stage. Dude, walk in That's closet. That's brilliant, dude. I love that. And just so tell, yeah, like, open, like, and it's just like, you know, we all have trouble trying to decide. You know, gals especially, because you just got more stuff and more options and more items. Baby, that's not your color. <laughs> Listen, we got the polka dots. Don't double down with the plaid. Be loud with your thoughts, not your skirts. I know your boyfriend just bought you that scarf. But guess what? He needs cataract surgery. The man's going blind. Oh, my God. I don't he's, think like, he's like Tim Gunn. He goes, those two things together, you're not going to make it work. Because you can't. <laughs> Baby, you couldn't pull that off. So pull it off. <laughs> this snarky best friend. Oh. Oh, my God. I mean, we're getting, I mean, it's, hey, man, it's, you got them for GPS. You got the voices on a, with Alexa. Why shouldn't there be one in the closet that truly is helping you get your wardrobe together? I, I think it'd be unbelievable. Honestly, like, I mean, I, how many years... Truly, do you think we're away from that? I remember being at the Ha Ha Comedy Club, we're and, close, and somebody saying, "I bet we're five. Some some drunk comic who fuck who was it was like, Elon "I bet Musk. he's like, I bet five. <laughs> I bet five years he goes truly away from flying cars." And this was, I think, no joke, in like 2010. And he was like, five years tops." And he was so he said it was so much conviction. You know, sometimes you just like you believe a drunk guy because uh, his and credits not- were he's from the future. <laughs> <laughs> But he just said it with so much like he was like he was like somebody was like said something about something and oh somebody said uh, oh I can't believe we can't get these like forest fires under control but yet like flying cars are just around the corner and he goes five years tops and we were like what and he was like flying cars that's happening five years tops wait a minute he's not in the line <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you it's happening five years great Scott Marty. That would be that would be so funny, a, a, a stand-up comic from the future, yeah, who just comes it's back, great, to, to who talks about like guys, what's up with the what's up with the the Mars Wars, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he comes back and he's just like, or how about the guy who's frozen in time and all his bits are about stuff dude, that's already happened, so, so he can't be hacky. He's like, you guys hear about OJ Simpson, dude? That's so. Let me tell you a thing that I really did. I swear to God, I pitched. So when I was on Arsenio Hall. I pitched. Great sentence, by the way. Dude, Dude by the bucket way. Bucket list item? I want 100%. Yeah. So what had happened was, and uh, shout out to Arsenio Hall, mm. so fucking cool. What the champion happened, of comics. I mean, so, so groundbreaking, like yeah. in a way that I don't even think people today, unless you like saw him sort of come up and, and what he represented and all the greatness about him. And... um but anyway, I love him. Watched him when I was a kid. So they go, um, for two broke. They they're like, will you, will you want to do our senior hall? I'm like, uh, yes. Always know that sent the ends in yes. Yep. So then I go, can I be a comic who you bumped off the old show ten times? And I only wanted, and I wanted to come dressed like the '90s, and only do bits as if I was a stand-up from the '90s that you who was bitter, cool. but still Jonathan Kite, yeah. and be like, hey guys, m- you guys don't know this, but I was supposed to be on the old Arsenio show, your producers bumped me 10 Great. times, which I get, and I wrote an entire stand-up routine. From like 94. Dude, and I wrote it about Saved by the Bell, 
I and I had I I actually got a bag phone and I had the whole outfit. I had I had Reebok pumps. Now were the jokes like that's amazing? Where'd you get the pumps from, by the way, dude? Just I, Amazon. I, I had them. Wow, for real. Because that that was a bucket list thing as a kid. We could never afford that yeah, stuff. Me so when I when I pumps be, were expensive, real expensive. Yeah. But they were so cool. They were so cool. So first but, time a shoe had a toy on it, right? Uh, also, yeah. it, it, you, and, and where you felt like, and maybe again being at the age where you go, mom, the you don't get it. Like it's not just cool. It's like the pump makes the shoe tighter, and then you go faster, and then you jump higher, and then I can dunk, and then girls are gonna show me their tits. By the like, way, yeah, she's like, you're eight. <laughs> <laughs> He goes, you just see the commercial, it's pumps equal tits. <laughs> pumps, breast pumps. Pumps. Make, make the connection, <laughs> mom. mom. <laughs> you not get I it? do not get this. <laughs> she goes, you'll never get a dunk. Uh, <laughs> that's, not, that's the only that's thing out of that sense. That was the takeaway from that. Yeah. But by the way, we, we got the LA gear pumps. <laughs> they were like <laughs> the knockoffs. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. Dude, it was LA like, gear. No, LA gear on. was cool for a minute. Ha- it was only half a circle. Yeah, so it wasn't even a full bump. Did they give a <laughs> did they, did they get did they give a uh, contract to anybody? L.A. Gear did anybody like? I feel like British Knights did, but I'm not sure about British Knights was yeah they were okay. They had some cool commercials. They were it was yeah. like at night. I feel like at like a Brooklyn, you know, street park. How did they not do like um like Knights in Shining Armor with some basketball sneakers on? <sighs> Missed opportunity, dude. I, well, that's what I submitted, and I still haven't heard back. Um, but let me tell you, so I couldn't, so I, I showed up, and then what? Shout out, I've never met this guy, but Paul Shear, big fan of Paul <coughs> Shear. You know, you guys know him from Human Great Giant, dude, a lot yeah. of a super funny guy. So he did our Shirio Paul the week or two weeks before, because he has this character that I was unaware of until that. Oh. Saw it, super funny. And I think that Arsenio felt like he was like, I don't, I, not that he, I think he liked what Paul was uh, doing. I, I I don't know what his opinion of it was, but I think that they were like. Two white guys back to back that he didn't like. But he, w- that he was like, he was like, listen, more, less white people on the show. Um, and then, uh, I'm serious. No, no. He said, I'm canceled. And so, um, uh, and so uh, he, um, what he said is he was like, I just don't want to do throwbacks because I think, you know, he didn't even want to do this on the new show. Arsenio Hall didn't want to do who, 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 which by the way. He was I'm a, torn on that. I think, listen, in the dog pound, like people. By the way, it didn't. It didn't lessen him. It, I think it endeared him, and I actually think personally, and I don't have anything like that as iconic as him. I would have loved to have seen him do it from as a fan. Yeah, I think people that are watching the new show are mostly people that watch the old show, yeah. right? And by the way, if you're tr- if you're trying to get a new generation, there was nothing goofy about. I mean, Johnny Johnny Carson used to fake swing a golf club. That wasn't lame. Hey, oh, like it was like a funny thing. It was just yeah. like a, it was like a thing that he yeah. did. It's like or they, oh, you know, like also this isn't that out of style. Like yeah, we never do it anymore. But they're like, but so, why not? Exactly. We're bringing it back right now. By the way, we could do this instead of handshakes now with the COVID. Yeah, Adam, what's up, dude? Ooh, 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 ooh. Except we're breathing so much. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I, I went. It takes to, a lot out of you. I was like, <clears throat> yeah, I went to a testing center a few days ago. And, uh, and, uh, um, we get it. You have money. And I'm like, uh, it, for, it was, uh, hold on. It was for Ebola. And, um, I got money in Ebola. <laughs> Drop dead. <laughs> and this guy about, about like, no joke, like, like 30 feet away was, had double mask on and he was talking to this woman about getting tested for COVID. And he was there and he goes, yeah, my throat's really sore. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm like, I actually wound up not even going in. Um, cause they were like, it's a two hour wait, but I'm just listening to this guy like over he, like 30 feet that way. And he starts laughing and telling loud jokes. And I'm like, hey, man, if you think you have COVID, stop breathing in so deeply and throwing that out into the world. What did he say? He said, uh, come here. And I'm like, <laughs> and I went this. I went, hoo, 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 and this ran away. No, but like he didn't want another 90s thing, so I actually went on as a Ukrainian talk show host. Awesome. And I wore a he- I wore a fur helmet and had them do like 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 sort of um the traditional I I don't I guess this is sort of a slam now you can't say the word gypsy anymore but like those mm. the music that they would do like sort of camp music from yeah. Europe and stuff. Oh, cool. So I had to see if the band could play it. They crushed it and I came out in an all white suit oh with no God. shoes on oh my God. and did like a dance. And dude, he was all so, for it. Dude, he was awesome. <clears throat> yeah, that's the type of shit, man that like Anytime Will Ferrell goes on a talk show Bro, and does like a character so or uh, like that's, I don't know, that just seems like so much more fun. And also for them where it's like they've had everyone come on and just plug their shit and do the yeah. same. Like, w- wouldn't it be more fun to have some goofs with something that's like 
But just a little bit out of left field. The host must love that yeah. because it's like you care yeah. about the interview. Yeah. And just sort of, and there's people who are good at, at interviews and people who, that's not their talent. Totally. So it's like you need a balance. But I think that we're lucky when we get to see guys like Robin Williams, Will Ferrell, Jim Carrey. Oh, these, yeah. You know, these these people really come out and make that you feel like I've never given this interview before and you'll never see it again. Yeah, man. Well, Jim Carrey did the, um, I think he, well, well, he he did a few character things. I'm, I, I've famously loved, I think it was the VMAs where Jim Carrey had a full beard. Oh, dude, and he sang G- Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah. And he was just like a, doing a, it was just a total it was, like weed farmer, pothead, like it was hippie guy. Unbe- it had cut to Jimmy Smits in the audience mm. laughing his head off. Wow, really? Oh, yeah. I remember it like it was... I love me a good Jimmy Smith's cutaway. Bro, that's why I love him in the Star Wars movies. Was he in there? In the uh, in the prequels. No way. We gotta get out of here, and Jimmy's like... <sighs> Some guys are just made for the cutaway face. Bro. I, I wonder could... if anyone's made a career on just that. No dialogue ever, no lines. Yeah, <laughs> Me. <laughs> just well, dude, you, you definitely in a lot of commercials... Oh, I did that. You're dialogue not wrong. and not dialogue, you but are I not definitely, wrong. I definitely feel like I saw four or five back to back in the same block of television, where it was like John being like, and then the next one was like, well, I can name them. I, I'm telling you, you are hey. so right. By the way, yeah, Cars.com. I'm on the computer and just going like, <laughs> and then there's one that I did before. I think for. I think it was for Volkswagen. What were you looking at, by the way, when you made that face? What was on the key, on the computer? Porn. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but but they don't know that car porn. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's your Transformers. <laughs> hey man, Autobots. They, yeah, yeah. I'm looking. Ejaculated at... rollout. <laughs> beep like... boop, beep beep. Yeah. <laughs> that's them coming. <laughs> beep boop, beep boop, beep. You're saying this to the director, by the way, because you actually pulled it up on a computer. He goes, dude, these computers aren't even supposed to be plugged in. Look at my sketches. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody look at my sketches. I got crazy long fingernails. I'm like Howard Hughes. <laughs> Wait, okay, cars.com, then what else? And uh, Volkswagen, I'm sitting there with a the newspaper. Oh. It hits it, and I and I look down, and I go, Dude, you, so you were the king of the, wait a second face. Dude. Hold on a second. Wait a second. The, the, the face of like the guy who's like, who's in, who's, who knows something's up. It, just like you, intelligent, informed consumer. The I can't believe that just happened guy. Huh? I did do another one for Dinty Moore where this guy, he was so Is hungry. Is that a gum? Uh, it's, it's the opposite of gum. It's corned beef hash. <laughs> It's really? Yes. Oh, my God. Dinty Moore. It's a very famous brand. Yeah. It's like the tin cans where you pull them. Wow. Yeah. And it's delicious. And what'd you do in that? So I was a guy, no words, no dialogue, at my computer again, and my stomach was rumbling so much that by the end of it, my stomach eats me. And I am inside my own stomach, and you see my hand get pulled in through one of the the. Uh, That's kind of funny. Valves. Yeah. It was a great commercial. Corned beef hash just coming through with the comedy. Bro. They were like, th- then they gave me nothing else. I killed it with the Corby Hash campaign. <laughs> then I'm on nothing. Now I work for Tic Tacs. <laughs> you work for Tic Tacs? Well, I give them away. I'm a bathroom attendant. <laughs> Banaka? <laughs> the craziest thing you've ever seen in a bathroom from a bathroom attendant. Oh. Because you and I... I mean, oh, wow, dude! I'd say we love to hang with the bathroom attendant. I'm, dude. I, I, I love it. I love to uh, gab around with them. Uh, there's, I, first of all, when the bathroom is like small, when there's like one urinal, two stalls, and then the sink, and that guy's still there, you're like, damn it, dude! Like, they gotta dude. just wrote. They gotta like, I don't know, man. Have you be like in a glass booth, maybe, or like. Just or it's like I'd be an come alcohol in. case at, at Bevmo, where if I need assistance, I can go ding. There it is. If I really is need a urinal. Yeah. <laughs> can, can you drukar noir me? <laughs> can you drukar my noir? Weirdest thing, probably, uh, fuck, I don't know, granola bars? Like food. Anytime there's food Wait, in there. Granola bar? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, whoa, don't eat that in here. This what? is... A, this is... <laughs> It's like those, it's like I only have one of the sticks. It's like it just looks like cat litter on you now. You're like, hey man, I good. Oh dude, I good. Oh, Jesus, I good. 
You're like, hey, man, can I get a drink? Wait, yo, just put on my tab. It's at the bar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. Bathroom bar. Oh, oh well, that's my a, yeah, God. Dude, yeah, you, you take a dump and then you take a shot. We, <laughs> dude, we need, we need more ice in the urinal. <laughs> He's like scooping it with a glass. He's like... <laughs> He's got Tom Cruise over here. <laughs> uh, you got a cruise? Just the laugh, but I, I don't. I don't um, you know, I just watched. Oh, that's good. I uh, well, you know, now he's always trying to reason with you. Yeah, he's always. I think my voice is a little too 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 low. But Wait, let's do this. Tom Cruise trying to describe uh, to Nicolas Cage, and then I'll you just flip it out and take it from here with your cage because it's better. But I want to hear Tom Cruise trying to get Cage to go up to space with him. Let me tell you. Wait, am I? Am I Your cruise. cruise. I'm gonna be caged. Okay, good, good, yeah, good. I was yeah. like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nick, what? <laughs> I gotta tell you. Have you? Have you ever been to Mars? Obviously not. Well, I don't know. You've been in a lot of places. <laughs> you would love it up there. Okay, go on. There is so much Mars water. Have you heard about the water? We have water down here, Aquafina, Dashani. But not like that. Okay. Not like Mars water. Oh. It is so good. Bigger? Better. Wetter. What? Wetter? Yes. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Are you on pills? Yes. I'm, uh, I'm serious. <laughs> hey, fellas, you want any, any granola bars? <laughs> Hold on. We're fine. We're in a, we're in a stall. <laughs> we're taking turns. <laughs> My thing I love about Tom Cruise is that his pitches goes, it's wetter. Oh. By the way, they just did find a shit ton of water on Mars. Oh, for real? A shit ton of it. What are they going to do with it? I mean, sell it. <laughs> For real? I don't know. We're trying to get it. God, is they just what? found water on Mars. Are you kidding me? That is that's crazy. Like, yeah. It's crazy because they, they saw the, they, they saw riverbeds on some of the photos before, but they, they found actual water. Is that what we've been trying to... Yes, because that means that life can exist. Wow. Isn't that crazy? On just water? Yeah, that's because we essentially... And then each other. We get it, Christians. No, no, but yeah, we get it. That's where it all started. Mm. And so if, if that's the component in our atmosphere, what we need Man. is we need that and we need oxygen. I would love to... I would, I, I'm would. i open to the idea of, of there being other life out there. I think there is. And I, I mean, if, seeing confirmation of it. Hey. Nick Cage? Yeah. Tom Cruise has been Nick Cage this entire time. It's like Face Off 2. It's called Fuck Off Cruise. <laughs> That's the porno version. It's Nick Cage having sex with himself. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. No, it's good. It's it's Cage. It's a woman hiring a Tom Cruise lookalike for some, sort of, for some sort of... For some sort of... It's a woman hires to, a Tom Cruise look like to to <laughs> to strip tease. I uh, <clears throat> and it turns out to be Nick Cage. <clears throat> I am uh, I am not very good at this. Oh, this know. is gonna be great, Brenda. Brenda, right, turn the music on. Turn the music on. <laughs> You're just singing it. We don't. Well, the speakers don't work, D Dana. Is okay, this, do your dance, Tom Cruise. I'm this is not, great. <laughs> is this working? You're doing great. How about how about now? <laughs> Nick Nick Cage? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> See my new movie, Pig. <laughs> Is this part of your press tour? Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh speaking of press tour. Pre speaking of pressed. <laughs> no, press, press, not press. Press <laughs> juice. <laughs> There's also a press juicery. <laughs> Nicholas Cage's press juice. <laughs> oh, that's the grossest thing I've ever said. Oh my God, Nicholas Cage's. This <laughs> podcast is brought to you by Nicholas Cage's <laughs> Press Juice. All right, I want to do something real quick. The holidays are coming up. I want to be Santa Claus, and I'm going to have a handful of different celebs sit on his lap and ask him for something. Here we go. Ho, ho, ho. 
It's good to be back in the mall, first of all, because obviously COVID is uh, uh, really just taking things down a notch. It's been a real buzzkill this year. Omicron's coming around the corner, but we still have just enough uh, in us to, 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 to Christmas wish. And you have to believe, you have to dream still. So I've, I've opened my heart and opened my garage to some of uh, the locals in the neighborhood to come sit on my lap, uh, six feet, of course. I'm just kidding. I don't. I, I, I got the Kirk booster so they can sit on my lap and that's right i went to costco and got a slice of pizza and the kirkland vaccine sit on my lap hey look who it is it's vince vaughn what do you want for christmas you tall drink a dick i'll uh, i'll tell you what i want right now sure i want world peace great answer and that is my name for ron artest i just want him to come on over i want i want to play one-on-one with world peace great i'll make it happen i have his facebook and let me just say something right now I, I kind of get what you're doing right now because of the whole Fred Claus thing. Sure. Remember I was Fred in the back oh, of the Oh, yeah. Movie? Nobody does, by the way. I have it on Laserdisc, and I'm going to be also handing that out at the mall today. Fair enough. So I got you a copy, baby boy. I'm going to sign that kind of thing. This tall drink of water is going to sign that thing. You know no need. I'm more of a Giamatti guy. Well, well, well. There he is. Well, well, well. Sorry. Vince and I, we walk around together, and we... Nobody asks for it, but we reenact Fred Claus... We do it every year. Just unprovoked? Yes, and then we get we we have a record to see how fast we can get kicked out of the mall. <laughs> we last year we lasted a good thirty five minutes because it was closed and we were doing it for no one. <laughs> hey uh hey <laughs> Hey Paulie. Hey Paulie, my man. I'm talking to Santa Claus right now. You can get in the line right now. Yeah, you're kinda of cock blocking the conversation, Giamatti. Well, all right, sorry. Do you want anything for Christmas or I, not? I do. I'd like a big ham. A big sweaty done ham done. How about anything to drink with that ham? Well, I'd like to suck down some, uh, oh, some delicious maple syrup. How about some Merlot? Not Merlot. <laughs> I am not drinking Merlot. The cleaning crew is already here. Okay, get out of the way, you dumb bitch. Uh, Coming up next. Oh, look at this, Seth Rogen. Sit on my lap, you. You sexy man. Uh, I'd, uh, I will, uh... What would you like for Christmas this I, year? F- first of all, I would, uh... I, uh... I'm more of a Hanukkah guy. Oh. Uh, because They I, still do that, huh? Uh, well, uh... Yes, we, uh, we sort of do. If, uh... Uh, but, uh... I, uh... This year, the, uh... The number one thing that I would really, really like is, uh... I, I would like, uh... Uh, weed. I've never asked for that. A lot of people think eh, 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 that I ask for weed every year. But you know what, Santa? I've never asked for it. Not once. Well, I've been hiding some in my taint. Do you want it? (laughs) I am so thirsty for that taint weed. Well, the next guy in line has some all sport named after his own person. Unbelievable, guys. I- I'm trying to get in line here. Oh, former President Trump. What you. Santa, let me just say this, okay? Shouldn't you be in Canada? Okay, Seth? Move along, okay? Believe me. Well, he's fully vaxxed. He can be here. I would say this. You're not. I'm the real Santa, okay? You're fake news. What does that mean? You're fake. You're fake Santa. I'm Believe real, me, okay? I would say this about. There are a lot of people don't know this. I'm the original Santa Claus. Says okay? who? Says a lot of uh, America, okay? I received a second amount of votes of all time for Santa Claus. Ooh, well, that's and, incorrect. And, and 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 I would say that if people disagree, they should storm the North Pole. Okay, they should How get up there you. and they should get in there and take, uh, you know, all the podiums off and take a lot of Facebook. There's no way our there. elves could defend themselves. And I would say this. Hey, that I, I, I don't think you should do that. But don't not do that if you're, uh, you know, a supporter of this guy. Believe me. Feels okay? like you're telling them to do that. I think people should do whatever they want. This is a free country. Well, then your wife, Melania, should probably... Fuck off. She's chained to the bed at home. And she's... Please a, help. A mouthful Who was of, that? A mouthful of all sport. Why is my phone still on? A mouthful of all sport. Hey, uh... Thirsty all for right, Trump. All right, thank you. For, please move along, and uh, please move along. Who? This last kid, I uh, hop on up, uh, looks... Oh, you are you a kid? You're very tiny and you're bold. It says Jason S on your name tag. Who? All right. 
Senate, let me just say this. Oh, Jason Statham, I'm a big fan of you. You're the you're my whole pass, as my wife says. The one guy I'd be gay for if Mrs. Claus died, hopefully. But I'm about to get my Christmas wish then. Because you're my whole pass. Are you serious? This is an unexpected turn of events. We're at the mall. I can't just fuck you here. Says who? Touche. It's time. Kids, it's set up be... <laughs> wait, wait, what? It's, it's, Kids, it's... I'll be in the sleigh wrapping presents, wink, wink, hand job. Oh, I'm about to slay. <laughs> <laughs> Dead ass. Have you heard of the song Jingle Bells? Oh, baby. <laughs> I have. How about the song It's a Mouthful of Santa? How about, how about White Christmas? How about, how about this? Let me say this. How about All Night Long by Lionel Richie? All night long, all night. Oh, you ruined it. I have to be honest. I'm not a fan of you singing. Oh, sorry. I just went soft. The one thing I... Wait a minute. Let me get that candy cane <laughs> back to the pointing North Pole again. You know what I mean? All right, that was funny. And I'm hard again. <laughs> <laughs> by the way... I just saw a flash of us in a black box theater doing like an, a two-man improvised show, just going off the rails. We look out, and we turn finally, and I just go, all right, we'll take one more suggestion. And there's, they turn the lights on. There's like maybe maybe two guys are left. I thought there were kids. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a Christmas show. Or Santa pulls back after that whole thing, and he's like, let's get this kind of guy going. And they just pull back. Hey, yeah. And he's pulled back. He's like, well, let me finish Don't this. about me. His new movie. My new movie's just stuck in stuff. <laughs> I'm going to turn that coal into diamond with all the pressure. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> well, let me finish. There's two more kids. Yeah, I'm sorry, son. You had to listen to all that. What do you want again? A pen? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> You're wasting your, your, your Santa ask for a pen. That's like, that's like getting a make-a-wish and asking to meet Don DeLuise. He's dead. Or getting a make-a-wish and asking to meet the Mr. Owl. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you have Pajeria? Dude, by the way, the Santas this year, they're back in the malls, you know? Are they really? Yeah, that's what I that's what I saw. I don't uh I don't know that I put my kid on a I'll be honest. I one thousand percent ain't if I have kids uh letting them go to the the mall Santa. Just because I grew up in an area up Lake Forest Park, Washington, where one winter there was actually back to back winters of a Santa that was uh yeah. Same Santa? I mean, great title for the movie, starring Hanks. Hanks and Jeff Bridges, who are the same Santas at a mall, trading off shifts and fighting to be top Santa. This summer. Well, I don't know who hired that other guy. Well, we had to hire a second Santa, Bill, because there's uh, only so many hours in the day, and you're just, frankly, uh, not as experienced as our number one Santa. Come on! Let me say this. Tom Hanks is... Oh, wait. Go ahead. <laughs> this felt like an important line for the trailer. There are 25 days towards Christmas, and I'm going to be here for every one of them. Bill Thompson was just a single dad with no hope or job until... I, I promise you, I, I'm going to get the job. Don't take my kid. <laughs> Dad, are you going to get that Santa job, or is Christmas going to die along with you and Mom's love for each other? Well, no. To the second part of that. <laughs> that was a very brief answer for a thorough question. I thought the announcer was coming in. This summer, I mean winter. <laughs> this summer, the Christmas movie that couldn't wait till winter. <laughs> Where two mall Santas have to fight for the opportunity to be the best Santa in the mall. Wait a minute, man. You're telling me there's another guy? We uh, hired another guy because, frankly, there's just not enough hours in the day. And you're older, Max, okay? Uh, Your time is almost up. If we don't get another Santa in the mall, you might die and kids could see Santa die and Christmas dies too. Uh, Do you want to kill Christmas with your, f with, your f with your fake heart? We know you had a transplant, Max. Listen, man, I just want to say that, you know who else was old? Santa. And you know what's older than all of us? The miracle that is Christmas, man. 
Nasty. So I'm going to sit here like a Toyota thon. <laughs> the last hand to leave the car gets it for a Labor Day bash. And I'm not going to leave that chair, man. And I'm not going to leave it until December 26th. And because you know who needs me more than anything? Who, Max? The kids, man. The kids, man. It was always about the kids, man. You make a good point, man. In the longest trailer that was ever made for a movie, we finally get to see what happens when Christmas is held in the palms of two different hands. Tom Hanks. Ow! On the chair! I brought my own. I brought my own! Jeff Bridges. Listen, man, I've been peeing in jars because I can't get up. In a story about what happens when two guys fight for one job. Listen, you're both great. (laughs) And I would say, as your number one elf, (laughs) the spirit of Christmas, it's not on your lap. It's in your heart. So did my dad get the job? I guess you'll have to find out this summer. In Same Santa, Christmas will never be the same. Boom. (laughs) (laughs) Ow. (laughs) Oh, my God. Two long trailers is such a good idea. Oh, dude. Oh, man. Remember when we did it with you, me, and Piat uh, for the uh, Oscar, Oscar special? So and we did good. for Queef Latina. Remember? I don't remember what the story was, but it was there like There was a- no story. <laughs> I remember. By the way, I can't believe I said that with a lot of actual sincerity. I can't remember what the story was for Queef Latina, the fake movie we came up with. It was something <laughs> about her owning a diner. <laughs> it was the plot of Waitress. All right, so we're going to close this out. Okay. Great to see you. Crush Great. City again. So good to see You're, you, brother. Uh, this has got to be, we're, we're, we're in the higher upper double digits with your ALN appearances now. By the way, congrats on the new studio. How long have you been here? Oh, about, um, I don't know, maybe 20 eps? Yeah, because the last, the one that I did that yeah, I posted. over on Wilshire. And then the time before that, it was on Zoom because yep. it was during COVID. Yep, which was great. Yeah. <clears throat> and we did one on Zoom with our buddy, Willie, RIP. Oh, man. You know, it's crazy. I did write him an email mm. when um, Cameron had said, you know, he was the stage where he was at. Yeah. And I just, you know, I was really, it hit me hard when he passed, but I did send an email to him and I, I hope he read it, you know. I bet he did. Yeah. He didn't really, he didn't want any contact or yeah. connect, I think he just, I think he had a handful of people that were allowed, that he allowed to be around him for those uh, final days. But what a gem of a dude. The I mean, I, I, the that greatest. and uh, you know the and I just saw Cam a few weeks ago and just talking ab- about him and how great how thankful I was that he was in that so that we could have all that, those times and those laughs and then the pod that we did over COVID you he and I was just so special, so special. on top of like uh, it was just really great it was just we just laughed so hard and I I I just try to like I, I I'm glad that my brain goes right back to that stuff yeah but I mean however you slice it a Oh, man, a classic, like, not fair, no explanation, T- taken too quick, uh, a guy that brings a lot of... It never makes sense to me when people like that that are so... Uh, they, they just touch so many people like that. Oh, yeah. That, that just that ha- they have to go through this. And and the idea that you... it's It sucks because, for uh, every reason, but when you realize how many people... He touched and was, it was he was so important to everybody that knew him, yeah, and made such an impact. He was just one of those special people that really mattered in 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 a, in, a, in a, it would seemed like in a way like people would reach out to me and be like, oh, I didn't know you knew him. I was such a fan of his, mm. and like they're like, and I'd seen him in interviews, and a bunch of people texted me. Oh, his IMDb page is fucking, uh, you know, I, I yeah, I didn't even realize how many uh, things you just see him pop up and stuff and. Oh, dude. And, you uh, he was know. probably in that fake movie trailer we just made up. Oh, he would have loved to have been in it. I know, right? I was watching something about Mary, and he's one of the friends. Is he really? Yeah, in the beginning. Wow. When, when, he, when Ben Stiller meets her. Wow. He has, he has a crazy, terrible long wig. That's amazing. It's great. And I, and I watched it right after he passed, not even remembering that he was in it. 
Wow. It was just on, and I was just watching, and I was like, oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, dude. Well, Willie, we love you. We love you so you. much, brother. Miss you. Um, all right, we're going to close this out with a little Inside the Actor Studio questionnaire. Um, R.I.P. James Lifton as well. Um, you can do this as John Kite. You can do this as as uh, as uh, as somebody else, but let's let's do John Kite. We've yeah, had a lot of laughs. Um, <clears throat> Jonathan, what is your favorite word? My favorite word. Mm-hmm. Your favorite word. There's plenty of words to choose from, like debacle or jizz face. That's a hyphen. <laughs> By the way, how does the the the, the store the buckle? Not their sales are not called debacle, debacle, debacle because you're gonna save so much money. <laughs> um, um, I would say it joy. Great word. Yeah. Do you use it a lot, or you just you think about it? A you know, lot? I think about it a lot, and I think about. That I think that there's something really pure about, you know, what what I th what as an entertain when I was a kid and watching, you know, even something like Red and Stimpy when they would say like happy happy joy joy yeah you know and or the joy is the is something that we associate a lot obviously seasonally with with the holidays, but it is like an elation of a feeling that you that that's so special and so specific at the same time but yeah. so different for so many people yeah, yeah, yeah. but when you are feeling joy. It's like it's for you, for other people. It, it's a, it's such an encompassing thing. It's, and a, it's very personal. I love that. It's a word too that feels good when you say it. Yes. Like you yeah. feel like it's a word where, like, there's a my top five, is, you know, words where like I I like you know you say the word celebration or like that also has like a positive connotation to it yeah. where you like you it kind of makes you. But joy could be for anything, and like and I love. Um, like the, obviously that fart brought me joy, brother. You're not wrong, and you can't explain it all the time. Joy to the world, joy to my bowels. Yeah, yeah. You know, great answer, dude. What is your least favorite word? Um, <clears throat> I don't like the word, probably because of easy. Oh, there's one here. Canceled. <laughs> um, no, my my. We'll, we'll my, never get canceled. No, no, no. Come on. We're too silly. I wanted to. You got to have true opinions to get canceled. <laughs> yeah, dude. You got to be out there just really moving and shaking and dude. and and being topical. No, and I, that is not something. I am. I am. My point of view is from 1985. <laughs> I made that very clear. <laughs> um, Who were you looking at? Uh, yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> there's a guy with a giant rubber stamp. I don't like the word. Um, I don't like the word uh, cripple mm. because I don't like the action of to take something and then to maim it. Um, permanently, where they it can't do the thing. Whoa! That that it that it's that it is sort of meant to do Great when answer. you cripple something. Yep. And so I that that in my really truly my forever I thought about that uh, that I don't like that word because I don't like the thing that it is. Wow! Great answer, dude. What turns you on? <laughs> what doesn't? Um, jo it, joy. Yeah, lube company called Joy. <laughs> <laughs> It heats you up. <laughs> uh, what turns me on? Uh, you know what it is when things are uh, when things are easy. When not 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 that you shouldn't work for things, but I mean, uh, 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 prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> the transactions basic with the prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> when the prostitutes get the basic math. Yeah, yeah. when I, when I don't have to count on my uh, when I when I don't have to count on my uh, ten fingers and one toe. It's my pain. Um, no, but you know what I like, um, I, what turns me on in life is when things just, you know, when you have like a good hang with a friend yeah. and it's just easy. Yeah. Like I, that, not even like sexually, I just mean in life when gotcha. things just feel like, like it's just easy, even if you, there's problems or whatever, there's something very like attractive about that in my life. And obviously I think we, I work hard and I, I do think yep. that I put in the time, but I think there's something very satisfying when it's like, uh, it just feels right and like. You know, things are, thing, things are sort of, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I love that. What turns you off? Um, math. <laughs> what turns me off is, uh, 
you know what it is? Honest to God. Yeah. People who don't go with the flow. People who Whoa. are. I don't. I actually. It's a pet peeve of mine in life that it's all hard. Like it, it's as hard as you want to make it. But we're all here. And we all have our different stuff that we're going through. You, me, him, the guy with the rubber stand. And um, and the thing is, but I but I don't I don't like people who come at things with a problem. Mm. I like when people because we're all trying to get through this together. Mm. And I and and so when 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 people bring the sort of like uh like there's like a not even a give up, but they there's like a, a negation or like a stop to whatever it's doing. It's like, hey man, we're all trying to work through this together. Be a part of the solution. So that turns me off is when when people sort of bring that negative energy and, and, and try to impede it from from something moving forward. I feel like you truly live a life of like go with the flow and, and not go to the beat of your own drum, but go but but you're you're a you have a zest for like experience, right? And so I feel like you uh, you say yes more often than you say no. Yeah? I try to because I think about you know my favorite thing in the world is to be surprised. That's like the best thing when you, because it's not ah! just something that I can think of. I just shot my, I swear, like, <laughs> whew, I just felt a little liquid death down there. You know what I mean? Yoink. Hey, what's the color of this chair? Liquid death. Oh, like, can you tell I worked in a haunted house? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I, can you tell I, you I didn't even flinch. I'm a test dummy. <clears throat> I'm a car crash dummy. I go, that's what I've been working on. It pays pretty good in the union. <laughs> Could hit me with a baseball bat. I would have been like, in slow mo, <laughs> you did work in a haunted house, didn't you? I did. I did Halloween Horror Nights I for one did. season well, at yeah, Scarface. Didn't Zombie. I see you at Universal? Bro- no. Oh yeah. Yeah. Who was I though? I wore many hats. You were Wolverine. Okay, well, I yeah. remember at your the time. great stand-up, and I love about you as Wolverine. Right. But I was. Thinking- you saw. You were there when I was at Wolverine. Yeah. Who were you there with? Um, a lady. No. A buddy. I I think I was there with my buddy Seth. Yeah. Do you know that, that I have a, about a right. joke? By the way, real quick. I know yeah. this is like taking. The, but you know we can't do the movies that we used to do. Mm. One of the throwbacks I do is like I go, you know, movie. I go, people think that everything was like you know, safe and good. Remember Beetlejuice? I go, Beetlejuice was about a ghost that was trying to marry a child bride. Oh yeah. And guess where he is right now? He's a character Universal taking pictures of your kids. <laughs> that guy is still there, and they're making a sequel. That guy, by the way, the <laughs> oh, this ghoul who's trying to marry a child. I got a great pitch for a movie. Just because Alec Baldwin's a dad, we're okay with it. The uh, yeah. the uh, listen. I've got a gun. <laughs> the real the the Beetlejuice that worked there was a real nice guy. And he was a comic nerd, and I would go into oh, the cool. break room in full Wolverine attire, and all the other guys there, you know, fucking Groucho Marx and Shrek and fucking Spider Man and you know, uh, you know, uh, Ron. You know, we're all sitting there, and uh, and I walk in, and, Ron? and uh, you know, the the real the real guy's name. He's Captain oh. America. I'm just calling him by his real name because. Because uh, some of the guys really, you know, to a fault, were just like, you know, call me by my character name when I'm on set or when I'm when I'm here all day, like, and you're like, cool, cool, but you pulled up in a white Jetta, so <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. But love the commitment, no. Alex. Until you get Captain America's car. <laughs> <laughs> Until you stop doing Toluca Lake Productions of the Gingerbread Man every Sunday. And actually, let's fi- start I fighting would... real crime. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so he pulls out a comic in mint condition, and they're all huddled around, yeah. just high nerd alert, right? And and I like comics back in the day, but not as an adult. I just my appreciation level is uh, has drifted. So I poke around. I go, "Well, what are you guys looking at?" He go, "You got some comics?" And they all start laughing. I go, "What I say?" And he goes, "Yeah, man, some comics." And I go. I go, oh, you guys are going to be dicks about it, huh? I go, you got, like, the perfect one? And he pulled it out, and the guy who was playing Beetlejuice, was a real nice guy, had this, like, mint condition. And it was cool to see, like, and and how much he, you know, really just, it was like a prized possession to him. The energy and he that went, they give it. Yeah, and they were, like, pulling through the pages real soft yeah. so that we could all come at the same time. And and he was, uh, no, he was just, like, going through it. And, and it did make me step back and Too go, oh, fast. wow. Yeah. <laughs> Go back, go back! Uh, you can't uh, go back. They're stuck together now. Uh, <laughs> Wait, Cage, Cage, <laughs> seeing a group of guys, uh, all all getting real excited over a comic, but he comes in and makes it weird. Hey, what's up, Nick? What's that? That's uh, it's the second edition of Iron Man. Well, you know, my son's name is Kal-El. Okay, that's uh, true. Nobody said it wasn't. Oh, why are you so out of breath, man? Oh. Hold on. 
Let me see. Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> well, we're asking you what you're doing, man, because you came in to our conversation. Ah, uh, just. Uh, Oh, uh, let me see. Uh, can you hold please that up? Sit down, man. Can you please hold that up? Yeah, yeah it's, it's like, like I said, it's a second edition of Iron Man. Put your other arm around me. What? <laughs> <laughs> There's no... <laughs> oh, guys, we have to do one thing right now. <laughs> Are you rehearsing a... a... Steal the declaration. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. All right. Bravo, let's finish this up. I do want to say something. I love Beetlejuice, and I think they should make a second one. You and do? I, I love that movie so much. I love it, Michael Keaton. Looking come back. back as a, its creepy film, I still watch it yeah. all the time, and I still love it. Michael Keaton can do no wrong. I love him so much. Yeah, I, one and of I my bet he, heroes. And I bet he'd crush it right now too, because you're gonna, in full makeup. So it, he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna kill it. Oh, they're doing it. They, I swear to you, and and uh, Winona Ryder has signed on too. Wow, dude, Tim, Timmy Burt gonna wow. I wonder if Alec Baldwin's going to do it. Fuck, dude. Who knows, man? That stuff is like a heavy cloud. Speaking of heavy clouds, what is your favorite curse word? Uh, fuck. Yeah. yeah because Classic. you could do it so many ways. Mm -hmm. It means everything. Yeah. Are you more of like the hard F, or do you kind of like bring it home with the CK? I'm more of the... Uh, I used to say it as, um, like, fuck. I used to do a Tom fuck. Hanks getting kicked in the nuts on stage. Oh, yeah. And I would yell, fuck. That's awesome. That's what, yeah. When it gets dragged out, I love that. Yeah, that, fuck. Wouldn't it be great if Hanks, if, like, he did in one, like, the next Toy Story, like, if he just, if they if they somehow left it in and nobody caught it. The way that they did with um, teenagers to take off their clothes, when Robin Williams as the B in uh, Aladdin as the genie. If you turn up the sound really, really high, it goes, teenagers, take off your clothes. It's Robin Williams? They left it in? They didn't know. Oh, he did a, he did a different voice. Or he did, it was the genie. It's, it's, you have to turn up it so high, he like whispers it. Yeah, it's crazy. Good for him, dude. The legend, the best of all time. The gangster. All um, right. Uh, what sound or noise do you love? Um, I love uh, a dog, hmm. like panting. Like when a dog, when you see like a dog is, you can he like feel its joy when it's like, it's like coming at you or like. Gotcha. I thought you loved a dehydrated dog. I Listen, I live and leave a dog in a hot, is this, are we rolling? <laughs> I live to take a dog in a hot car. I go, you tell me where that money is. He looks thirsty. Unless he looks thirsty for one thing. Put Trump in your mouth. <laughs> but hey, you know what? Can I, can we go again one Dogs more time? don't drink Another orange thing? all Bo sport, Believe Don. me, one more time. Uh, all right. If you, put, Action. Put Trump in your throat. Yeah, oh, cut. No, dude, it's for dogs. It's a dog. First right. of all, the idea that we're making a sports drink for dogs is insane, sir. One more time. Action. Let me touch the back of your throat. Cut. Fuck, dude. Get Baron in here. Baron. Baron. Say the dog throat thing. Hey. That would appear. What is the line again? Barry, you're definitely embarrassing. Does anyone know what I sound like? Not me. I've never spent time with you. Is this really Barry? I don't know. <laughs> he fucking probably doesn't know, man. I'm sorry. I couldn't pick Darren out of a lineup if it was- That one. is me. I just called- <laughs> Yeah, you not know it's me. I just called him Darren. <laughs> it's with a B, not a D. I didn't realize that. You know what? Sorry, oh. speaking of D, you know what you want in your throat? No! Trump. <laughs> <laughs> what a funny mix-up that he always calls him Darren. Darren. Darren, get in here. Darren, I've been calling oh, you for my, 45 my minutes. Was like, you know your son's name is Baron. Who's Baron? Your son. No, looking for Darren. You keep calling him Darren like he's a cast member on Growing Pains. Darren, listen, B Baron, I don't know who you are, but if you could find my son, Darren. <laughs> he's like, the only Baron you refer to uh, knowingly is Red Baron Pizza. I thought you were going to say, oh. <laughs> the only the only Baron you refer to is me. <laughs> and Baron. <laughs> <laughs> because your seed is, well doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> your what? Your seed it, it doesn't work. Oh. It works. You know why? It's 50% Trump all sport. What, <laughs> what sound of noise do you hate? Um, when you 
you know when you uh, inadvertently, <clears throat> this is coming from, there's no uh, malevolence here, but you step on an animal. Like when you step on a cat or something oh, good. or a dog. I just forgot that I asked that and not which one do you love. So I added that to that. Oh, sorry. That's what I thought. It's my answer for both. <laughs> <laughs> no, so when I, you said, yeah, dude, I know. When like Pickle was my little 10 oh, pound cavapoo, if like she gets in the way and you no, step on the you paw, don't mean to. that noise is heartbreaking. And you heartbreaking. can't say sorry. They don't know sorry. They don't? I don't know. I've gotten her pretty fucking high and she understands a lot. <laughs> they don't understand. <laughs> I've grabbed a lot of pussy, unintentionally, and they never do sorry. Probably because I never said it. <laughs> You're right, though, man. That sound on any it's, creature. It, it it's, breaks my heart. Yeah. It breaks my heart. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt, Jonathan? Um, would I like to attempt? Yeah. What oh, profession other one. than your own? These are real lifting questions, man. Straight from the These team. are pretty good. These are pretty good. Um, what I, would, I always wanted to try uh, to be... I mean, outside of entertainment completely, uh, maybe uh, I want to be a, a part of a basketball association. Ooh. Because I think that I, I have such a passion. What I lack is the the behind closed doors knowledge of just like <clears throat> facts that help run a team. But I do think that- Well, that's because that most of us as fans yeah, are, because we we're not living yeah. the day to day and it's not required of us. Right. Yeah. But if I think if I learn that I have a, enough passion for it, oh, I bet you'd crush it. That I I would love to be a part of a of a like professional what? basketball team, like 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 ownership, like making trades I or like being a coach. To, like I thought about being an owner. Um, uh, that would be a dream job of mine. Because you're a great people person, oh, and you, you and you're good at you're good at all your 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 uh, energy. You're captivating. You're engaging. You're um. You, you do a good job of, like, delivering, like, I don't know, just you, connecting the dots. You'd be a good person that, like, needed to, you know, hey, we got to talk to Draymond Green about something's going on. Can you go down there as, like, what team owner? But you're also, like, but right after you do that, you got to go into a meeting because, you know, they're breaking ground on the new arena. Like, I feel like you could play, well, you could I, wear all those hats. I like guys like Steve Ballmer who are really passionate about the team or guys like Mark Cuban that really are yeah. you know that that love these guys want to be and, in it yeah and they want they want they want to help and I don't know shit about anything because we're obviously on the outside you know but it feels like they really want these guys to win yeah that's they cool. want them to be happy like I love Steve Ballmer I was this clipper season ticket holder for many years mm. I love his energy what if I was like uh wait who's who owned it before Steve Ballmer um I almost said Jeffrey Epstein uh no um uh not Clay Matthews um Ronda Rousey, uh, um, fucking uh, Sterling, Donald Sterling. Sterling. What if I was like, um, I want to be an owner like Donald Sterling? No, um, but yeah, I w yeah, I would. I mean, just... you think about it, but those guys are out there, and like to see these other guys with I, such I get passion your, and love. I get it. Yeah, there's, it's, and but also even that guy probably made it seem like he wasn't that for a while until that's, or, or although there was probably smoke where the fire was, right? Yeah, and also like when you see Steve Ball, I mean, again, these people. Like to be at all these games and to it's the thing about the Bulls, like growing up in Chicago, Reinsdorf, um, you know, uh, they I like don't like a Reinsdorf cowboy. Wow, how did that song never get made? I mean, just for one fan appreciation night, or like you cut to him waving well, when he's at the game. Krauss and Reinsdorf were like not, they were not liked. Reinsdorf was the one who wanted to trade Jordan, right? Yes. Wow. He was the one that was like kind of a dick. Kraut, yeah. Yeah, there he is. I mean, looks like he was, his face was, he looked like he was always just about to eat his own face. Dude, he looked like some, he looked like when they were like fitting him for a hat, they're like, well, how big is his head? They go, he's not here. Just measure that bean bag. <laughs> <laughs> just, and that's kind of a, that's a, that's not a fat joke. That's a big head joke. Huge head. But I think you, his head doubled in size. The same way that like your uh, your chest can grow when your body grows, I think his head grew when his body grew, and the way that um the Grinch's heart grew. Yeah, dude, he might as well have just been the Grinch. It's like, what dude, I... your head is three sizes too big. The Grinch made this guy look like fucking Katie Couric. Dude, the Grinch made him look like uh... that was the first good person I could think of. <laughs> You're like Matt Lauer. I'm like canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Stamp with a Matt Lauer dildo. <laughs> Lock the door. <laughs> what profession other than your own, what profession would you not like to do? That last one was what would you like to do? Which would you li not like to do? 
I um I don't want to be um a judge because I feel like you know, and I have friends that are excellent at this, but I feel like um um and, and friends of mine who are literally actual judges in the court systems, I just uh, I think that. I, Whenever I have to do like jury duty or things like that, like it's too, it's it feels too much responsibility. Yeah. And somebody, and, and the way that you can see that they can affect people's trials and whatnot, that's just not what I want my contribution this, in this life to be. And so I, I don't want to have that type of power over someone's freedom or life. Hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I agree that a, a job like that where you have to. I mean, they're probably. Do you think they go to conferences or conventions like judges to like learn about new laws the same way like medical people will? Or is I'm there... sure they do, and I think that they all talk. It also seems like any other job where you have authority, where there's like, yeah, look at the Kyle Rittenhouse one, man. It's like that judge yeah. clearly was like a pal of his, or like just thought he was cool and was like, this kid was just trying to protect the people. You guys don't get it. So he had a gun and shot people for just because video games are cool and they're cooler doing? when they're real. What are you doing with the defendants? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, no, but you're. But it's like there's a level of that where you just like, oh, maybe you can just kind of have personal preference and go off emotion and you. But you do, and you think about same with casting officers. directors, right? Yeah. I mean, well, so, that's. I mean, but that, that's the problem is for, like I don't like having that type of power because I because I my mind goes to the abuse of it. Yeah. And not that I think that, like, I, I'm somebody, if you give me power, I will abuse it. You hear that, Hollywood? <laughs> you give me power, it gonna get abused. Um, but it's, like, the idea that, that I just don't want that over people's lives. Yeah, I respect that. Uh, lastly, if heaven exists, John, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? You're one of my favorites. Good answer. People have been giving some good answers. That's fucking really good, dude. And what what specifically, if he got specific and was like, you know, I just saw you in, um, or I just saw, or I, you do a mean. I just saw your episode of Wizards of Waverly Place. Did you just do an episode of that? Not just like 40 years ago. <laughs> I did it so long ago, but he was like, and I'm like, God, that came out forever. And he goes, <laughs> just got he, it here. He goes, he goes, I'm catching up on my TiVo. What? I'm busy. I'm God. That's his catchphrase. Whatever he, what a great thing. And then you, and you go, that's your catchphrase. And he just goes, and he opens his coat, and he it's goes, not there. And he goes, ah, damn it. Or and I th- it shows up. I thought he was going to say, Christine. I thought he was going to go, that's why you're one of my favorites. Whoa. You open it up, and it's on a t shirt. He goes, we're selling these in the gift shop. <laughs> How did you know that? Have I, we seen the gift I, shop? I, I, my bad, my, my bad. You just got here. He just got here. He goes, that's why you're one of my favorites. <laughs> wow, dude. I, I, I'm actually God's speechwriter. That's what I want to do up in heaven. We got to make a cool God movie where he's Dude. that type of a guy. Where he's a, who's the, who, who would play him just based on who we're doing? Is it Giamatti? Based on just like that kind of like a. Hold on though, but no, for real. Or is it, could or you, is it Billy Crystal? Billy Crystal is is a little too old. Like how they did. Um, Hanks? With a, Tom Hanks is cool God. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you got to think about that. Like, you, he, like I don't think, it, you know what? And weirdly enough, and I love him, you love him. It would be Ryan Reynolds or it would be somebody who like. Oh, yeah. You know, but, it, but it would need to be like, like George Burns played God. And and so it's like they've already sort of done the old one or like uh, what's his name uh, uh, Morgan Freeman. But I'm trying to think of like but one that's based solely around God, like Hanks being like, "Have you seen the gift shop?" Like you know, uh, you know, d- dinners at five. I-, I don't just like a guy that's like Danny a- Bonaduce is cool guy. He do a Bonaduce? Nah, not really. I, I sort of do like uh, hey, do it's not him though at all. Uh-huh. I met him once. I was on his radio show. In like ninety seven. Save that story for the next podcast. That's why he's my favorite. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Kite. Love you, buddy. Always Happy amazing. Holidays. Happy holidays. Could do this for hours. You and Amanda. I love you. Love you, brother. Thanks for having me. Mmm, Zoa. Thanks, Rock. Guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you enjoyed that episode. It was a good one. A lot of laughs, a lot of tears, a lot of uh stuff to uh to think about and chew on huh because that's what life's all about chewing on the good stuff nobody said that maybe denzel did maybe tom hanks did maybe they said it together in philadelphia the point is click subscribe right here on the aln logo so you can get more episodes 
and stay up to date when new content drops, highlights, animations, clips. It's all here for you, baby. I'll see you next time. Well, I don't know how to blink.